We're back with the NZXT H1. So really fast turnaround time on what happened here. There's now a formal recall on the NZXT H1. We've been covering this case extensively for a couple weeks now. We posted three videos. Two of them were about the fire hazard that is the NZXT H1's PCIe riser cable, where we were able to initially recreate the fire through some difficulty. And then later, once we understood it in part two, we were able to demonstrate with some testing methods and basically building a fuse, how easy it is to actually make the fire happen once you understand the scenarios that lead to the fire in the NZXT H1 riser. So we're back now. Part three was talking about NZXT's response to all of this. And now this is part four out of probably, well, maybe five. We might have one more where we're going to look at the new riser from NZXT once we have it, and that should be on its way to us soon. So hopefully we can verify that the issue has been resolved and everyone can move on. Uh, but this one's talking about the recall specifically, and it involves the Consumer Product Safety Commission, Health Canada, and NZXT. So let's talk about that. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's new keyboards. EVGA's new Z20 and Z15 RGB optical mechanical gaming keyboards have abundant RGB LEDs and programmable macro keys on the left side of the keyboard. They also have a sensor to detect and turn on the LEDs when you're in front of the keyboard and turn them off when distant offering a unique feature for keywords. The keyboard claims a 0.5 millisecond response time and 100 million keystroke lifespan. Learn more at the link in the description below. So in this video, we're going to be covering the recall details and what you can do or what NDXT is doing. We'll also be talking about our experience working with the CPSC. It's the first time we've ever worked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission. And it was an interesting experience. We uh, provided them technical information so that the CPSC, which is a, a government agency in the US, could make the right decisions pertaining to what to do with the NZXT H1, uh, either at a, a government level or a cooperative level with NZXT. And we'll also provide some perspective on the numbers, so the occurrence uh, frequency of the issue. We have now the volume of sales through the formal recall that's been issued. And we also have some numbers from Samsung's previous Note 7 issues, just to provide perspective as to what it takes to get a recall to happen when there's a fire involved. We won't go into any detail on what the issue is specifically in this one, because we've already done that in, in two pretty long videos. The very short of it is that there's a 12 volt plane in the PCIe riser printed circuit board that is too close to the hole and so it becomes exposed with time and that can cause a short to ground which can cause a heating element and then a fire. So that's the shortest version. Watch the previous videos for more info on that. Over the past couple of weeks, GN has been working with the Consumer Product Safety Commission and specifically Commissioner Peter Feldman and, uh, and his team. And we were also working with someone on the technical team from the CPSC. So first of all, Commissioner Feldman and his team, they were extremely interested in uh, getting all the details, learning about what our concerns were regarding uh, future use, resale of the H1's riser to potentially unsuspecting or, or uninformed customers. And um, they really wanted to get to the bottom of it. So we spent about an hour on the phone between the commissioner's team and the technical team, plus a few emails detailing the, the sort of short version of our videos previously. And uh, overall, we were, we were impressed with the CPSC's actual interest in the NZXT H1 issue. So that was cool. It was, it was nice to see that uh, they, they really wanted to understand the problem and see what they could do to help. So the recall is being filed under the Fast Track Recall Program. And this program, we looked into it on the CPSC's site. And it's got a couple of special rules. Basically, the manufacturer works directly with the CPSC. And the two of them come to terms on what they're going to say publicly. Uh, each party will release press releases. The CPSC will also coordinate with other government agencies. So for example, with the Samsung Galaxy Note, uh, the US was involved, and then other countries like Mexico had its agency involved. So they, they coordinate working together with other agencies. And, uh, and then they have a recall plan within 20 days of the fast track program being initiated. This took a lot longer than that. So NZXT has been claiming it's been working with the CPSC since about November now, maybe early December, but I think it was late November uh, that they publicly first claimed that. So it would seem that there was either there was a dearth of information from NZXT or, uh, or they were working at it with a different level of urgency before we sort of got in contact with the CPSC in the last couple of weeks. It's possible that NZXT escalated at some point, but 
um, our general feeling was that maybe not all the information, maybe NZXC wasn't being fully forthcoming. Uh, about the severity of the issue with the CPSC, but we're not sure what they actually talked with them about. Either way, NZXE got moved into the fast track lane within the last couple of weeks, and here we are now. Let's go over the recall details, and then we'll come back to some of this. So NZXT has now formally worked with the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission on its recall for the H1. This includes the cases used with pre-built BLD systems, as we understand it. The CPSC has been working with Gamers Nexus as well directly for the past few weeks on the matter and sent us the, uh, the press release that it's planning to post publicly for the recall and the notice that it had written in combination with Health Canada and NZXT. The recall document specifically notes the PCIe riser assembly and the metal screws as being the source of a fire hazard and goes on to state that 11 incidents have thus far been reported to NZXT worldwide, with six of those occurring in the US. The report says that at this time, no injuries have been recorded from the resulting fires. Previously, when NZXT first started talking about this matter at the end of 2020, it noted that it had fewer than 10 cases worldwide, uh, it did so as well in an email to us when we inquired about the issue in December, and uh, basically said, not a big deal, uh, and, um, and kind of moved on with the plastic screw replacement much later. December 28th or so was when they started doing that. So they're up to 11 now from fewer than 10 previously. One of those might be ours. We're not sure, in which case it was created in a lab environment intentionally. But the biggest thing to really set as a reminder here is that our concern was that this is potentially more of a latent issue or a latent failure because the 12 volt plane in the PCB becomes increasingly exposed as you cycle a screw through it. And so over time, the chance of a failure increases if you end up using a metal screw that uh, chews into the PCB. So that was the real concern here. So they, they went up to 11, potentially one of them was ours. And then uh, in the future, there's possibility of, of a higher failure rate, which is probably what the urgency was on this. Of note, the report also indicates that 32,000 units have been affected, which should probably be about all of them and that 1,024 units were sold in Canada, hence the involvement of Health Canada on this. This includes direct digital sales from NZXE.com and sales from retail partners. The CPSC's press release says, quote, consumers should immediately stop using the recalled computer cases and contact NZXE for a free repair kit. And it says that the remedy for the recall is a repair, as opposed to uh, just completely refunding or replacing the entire product. In theory, NZXE should be able to control some of the enormous shipping cost of sending cases across the country or countries by having more technically capable customers remove and return the riser for an at-home replacement. And this is something that the CPSC asked us about as well. In one of our phone calls with uh, an agent from the CPSC, we were asked if we thought this was an issue that a technically savvy customer would be able to remedy on their own if provided the replacement and given instructions what to do with that replacement and with the original riser cable. So we helped provide information on uh, specifically the distinction between PC DIY type customers who might buy just the case and potentially BLD customers where they're buying a, a complete pre-built and might not know anything about system assembly. So the short of it is that we provided the CPSC with some background information on this industry uh, so that it could make whatever decision it thought was appropriate for uh, the NZXT H1. The CBSE specifically outlined the following model numbers are affected. It said CAH16WR W1, which is Matt White, and CA H16WR B1, which is Matt Black. It also said that the serial numbers, we'll, we'll put them on the screen, they're long. Uh, listed here are affected. So 12002334 0001 through 12039622042202. Those are affected. Uh, there are two more blocks. So there's 006489996108444 it keeps going 189725 through a lot of the same numbers. Uh, 844 We'll just put that on the screen. And then one more that was 0120AC001 quadruple zero one through uh, 01211C0190002285. Make this easy for you. So serial numbers are supposed to be sequential, but they normally randomize them, so it's not easy to figure out how many units a company is selling. The, the easy way to know if it's affected is this. It is affected. If you have an NZXT H1 and it has the riser cable in it from NZXT, 
it is effective. The serial number doesn't matter at this point. In the future, the serial number will start to matter. So if you come across this video or information of this, say, in a year or two from the publication date, because you just you didn't stumble across it uh, until much later and you have a case, then you should check the serial number. Because if you buy it after this date from NZXT, if they start reselling it, it's not for sale right now and it might not be again, but if they start reselling it, and they probably will, uh, in theory, the new ones should have a new PCIe riser. NZXT is already working on that. And it, those should not be included in these batches, but anything before this date would be included. So all of them is the answer to which cases are affected currently today. As for the cases, so the plan still stands where NZXT is hoping to have its new PCIe riser done in March. Uh, we were just informed the other day, this video is going up the same day that we learned of this recall. So yesterday, we were just informed that uh, NZXT might have a, a, an early sample ready for us to do some testing on for the new riser. And it's planning to have those to market in March or maybe early April at the latest as it gets through uh, Lunar New Year for its production. As for the hazard in the CPSC's report, it listed it as the same as what we showed in our videos. So specifically, they said, quote, metal screws that attach the PCIe riser assembly to the chassis can cause a short in the printed circuit board and overheating, posing a fire hazard due to the circuit board's design. As for our thoughts on this, so this is the right move for NZXT in order to protect users of the H1. Uh, so the cables need to be removed from the channel. That's what we've been pushing for for a couple weeks now. And it looks like that's what NZXT is working towards, if we understand all this correctly. If NZXT does not ask you to mail your old riser back before sending the new replacement, then we would ask you to at least destroy the riser before you bring it to an e-waste recycling center. The whole point of this is to prevent the possibility of reuse by an unsuspecting user in the future, especially as this particular failure has the potential to be more of a latent defect from repeat installation and removal of the riser in different systems. Samsung only had to start 35 fires out of 1 million units for a recall to get underway. So 11 out of 32,000 for NDXT, especially since that's 11 potential house fires, which can kill people, is a particularly bad failure rate. It's not like this was a broken USB port, so it's good that NDXT is getting this resolved. Still think the same thing that I said in part three, this should have been done a lot sooner. It shouldn't have required so much public pressure. And why NZXT has been saying since November that it's been working with the CPSC and yet didn't have any kind of recall until today when the fast track program itself is a 20 day program, that doesn't make sense to us. But uh, it sounds like maybe they weren't on the fast track program or weren't fully forthcoming. We're not sure the details. The end result was that our read on the situation is suddenly it got escalated to the fast track program once videos of fires started getting posted, uh, particularly the ones that we were posting the last couple of weeks. So NDXT is kind of on the right path here. They get dinged for, for, for the whole handling of the situation. Uh, but either way, they're working on a new riser and this is a much better solution than the original, which was to sort of push back and say, it's the plastic screws, that's, that's the fix. And NZC kept calling this a fix in its post from uh, the CEO and the team that we covered in part three, they kept referring to the plastic screws as a, a fix. They're not a fix, and hopefully that language changes. This was actually something we specifically called attention to when emailing the CPSC. We told them, hey, here's some background. This is what NZXE posted. This is their blog post. This is where they keep calling this thing fix, 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 acting like the plastic screws are enough. And it's not a fix, here's why. And then we gave them the information needed to, to defend that position. So hopefully that changes just for the sake of people checking that post in the future. It may have changed already by the time this video goes out. But that's what we'd like to see. Uh, NZXT, it sounds like is, is hopefully getting rid of the old risers completely and, um, and hopefully getting them, making sure, verifying somehow that they're out of the channel. All right, so some perspective on all of this. Samsung probably caused one of the most notorious uh, electronics-related or consumer electronics-related fires in, in history, or at least recent history, and that was with its Galaxy Note 7. There was a recall around that. So just to give some numbers to, to help provide perspective as to 
what does 11 out of 32,000 units mean? The recall process for Samsung began in earnest around September 1st of 2016, at which point Samsung claims to have received 35 reports of units with overheating batteries since the product's August 19th release. This was enough for the CPSC and its Canadian and Mexican counterparts to prepare a recall in all three countries, which was formally issued on September 15th based on the original belief that only 35 incidents had occurred. By the 15th, though, the incident count was officially updated to 92 in the U.S. and one in Canada, with, quote, 26 reports of burns and 55 reports of property damage, including fires in cars and a garage, out of a total of about, quote, 1 million units sold in the USA and 21,953 in Canada. The entirety of North America was prepared to recall the Note 7 based on 35 reports out of a million, while the H1 uh, and its February 12th recall, after being found in November, has been issued for uh, 11 reports out of approximately 32,000 plus, plus Canada, so about 33,000 total. Samsung used stopgap methods in between, like limiting device charge via a software update as it rolled out its solution, which was to ship fixed, in scare quotes there, replacement models. These replacement models also had similar issues in a few reports, leading to a second full recall, which included sending out heat-resistant boxes for shipping the returns to Samsung. The Note 7 was officially discontinued and recalled worldwide on October 10th, fewer than two months after its launch. So that's all the details on perspective from Samsung's issue, what's happening with NZXTs, where things are going. We will be getting a replacement riser in from NZXT, uh, just genuinely happy to see that NZXT is working directly with us instead of us having to acquire it through our own means because we're going to get it either way. So the fact that NZXT is at least sending us one of the cables to do validation on uh, shows that hopefully it, it is confident that it's got a fix here. So we'll work on that as soon as we get it. And uh, overall moving in the right direction, uh, again, a bit late, but it's far better of a response than what we got when we first started working on this, which was silence and uh, better as a response than what NZXT put out before we were working on it back in November and December. Thoughts on working with the CPSC just quickly, I guess. So this is the first time we have ever worked with any kind of government agency on like a, a product issue. And, uh, or at least the first time I can, we, we may have worked with some people in the past, but this is the first time where it's been something like a safety issue. So it was an interesting experience. Uh, we learned that the CPSC, a couple of things, so they're headquartered in Washington, not really surprised there. They have testing labs based in Maryland. I wasn't aware of this, but apparently the CPSC does some level of first party or maybe there's some contracting going on there, but either way, they do some level of validation testing and verification of problems. So that's kind of cool to, to learn. And the CPSC works to test and evaluate uh, some product level safety defects. It also works directly with manufacturers, like in the case of the H1. Uh, and with any reporting third-party labs, UL might be an example where, where someone else may discover the defect first and inform the CPSC of that defect. So on, to give you an idea of the speed, on February 5th, we sent the CPSC a big email with testing methods and uh, details on reproducing the issue, provided some microscope images of the defect, basically tried to get them up to speed as quickly as possible on what is the product, who buys it, uh, what's the root cause, all that stuff. And we also sent our video links, although I tried to shorten them. So it was big email, and within just seven days, the recall was issued. That's what we're reporting on now, seven days later. Pretty damn good for, for speed. So in the event of the NDXT recall, this was willingly worked on with NDXT by the CPSC. So they were probably working on this uh, around when our first video went up. if I would hope before we started reporting on it, they were working on this, but uh, definitely the pressure came in in the last couple of weeks. Either way though, seven day turnaround with uh, frequent replies from the CPSC. That was it, was, it was pretty impressive. It was good to see a product safety issue taken so seriously. So uh, as much as it was fun to work on this issue and we will be working on the new riser, Hopefully, there aren't too many products in the future that catch on fire uh, in a way that requires this type of, of coverage. Hopefully, the fires are mostly caused from things like extreme overclocking when liquid nitrogen or, uh, well, a map gas torture involved. But that's it for this one. 
We'll follow up as quickly as we can with the new riser once we get it and let you know how things look. And uh, contact NZXC directly if you have one of these cases. Get rid of the riser. Make sure they take it back or you destroy it so no one else ends up with a fire hazard in the future. And that'll pretty much close the story other than the testing of the new one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us out directly. We have our toolkits up there. We've got mouse mats in stock and shipping for both of those and plenty of other things like the bar runners. So check them out on store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly with this stuff. And we'll see you all next time.